Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. I am starting my 2020 YouTube channel videos now. Towards the end of December, my garden has been put to sleep. I'm going to show you how to start seeds indoors. I'm going to do a whole series on this through December, through January. First thing is really understanding what you need. I'm going to go over all these materials, but we're going to start with lighting. If you don't have enough light, you will not have successful seed starts, no matter how hard you try. So the whole key to starting your seeds indoors is providing light. And you need, to know two, you need to know two things. You need to understand the term lumens. And you can see right there that says 5,000 lumens. Lumens is the intensity or the brightness of your lights. All these lights I purchased at Home Depot, Lowe's, or Walmart. You want to look for, you can buy the fluorescent tubes like this. Then you can go and purchase a fixture like this. You insert the bulbs, you hang them, you have your grow light station. The bulbs here were about $10. These are T8 bulbs, and what that means is the T8 describes really the, uh, the amount of the, the wattage, but really the size of the bulb, the circumference of the bulb. Years ago when I've been doing this, I was using T12 bulbs. They're just fatter. You have T8s and then you have T5s. Why is that important? Well, they all work, but when you buy the bulbs, you want to make sure that you take a look at it and it says right here, T8. And if you buy a T8 bulb, you want to make sure when you're in the uh, Walmart or the Home Depot or Lowe's or your hardware store, you buy a T8 fixture. You just have to match the fixture to the bulb and that will set you up. And again, these bulbs were $10. The fixtures you can get anywhere from really 15 to 30 depending where you shop. So it's about a 25 to 40 dollar outlay but it's really really worth it. These bulbs last forever really. So when you look on here you see that it's a T8. It says deluxe daylight. That's the other thing. That's called Kelvin. There's a Kelvin rating. Let's see if they have it on here. Uh, right here. So right here it says Color temperature, which is Kelvin, is 6500K. The K stands for Kelvin. That's as high as you can get. You want this number to be 5000 to 6500 Kelvin. That is what daylight is. You can see that the lumens here, the output is 2600. So the higher the lumens, if you're getting to 3000, 4000, 5000 lumens, then the 6500K can move really down to 5,000, sometimes even 4,000. So the more intense the lumens, when you're at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, the little bit lower this number can be. But if you can find it, the perfect balance really is 6500K Kelvin for the, the color of the light, which mimics uh, daylight, sunlight. And you want the output to be at least 2,000 lumens. I recommend trying to get to 2,500 or 3,000. Now those numbers are going to vary greatly. So this is a fluorescent tube, 2,600 lumens, 6,500 Kelvin. I've used these ratings for years. My transplants always work. This is an LED system. This was only $22 at Walmart. It has 5,000 lumens, which is a number down there, the bright light, and it says daylight. It doesn't give the Kelvin rating, but that's going to be somewhere around 5,000 to 6,500. That's the daylight range. However, again, because this is 5,000 lumens, it's really, really bright. I don't need to worry so much about knowing the exact number of the Kelvin rating. As long as it says daylight, I'm good to go. And I have one of these lights right here. I'm going to turn all these on at the end of the video to show you what they look like. And it works really, really well. And again, that was only $25 at Walmart. This is going to last, again, forever. What I mean by forever, the LEDs will last for like 40,000 hours or something crazy like that or even longer. I do recommend if you're going to do something uh, where you have a quantity of seed starts to use a shelving unit like this. You just pick that up. The four foot tubes, or the four foot, yeah, the four foot tubes and fixtures fit nicely. If you use two, that really covers your seed tray nicely. We'll talk about that in future videos. 
Now, maybe you don't need to set up a, an elaborate system like that. You just want to use something like this. I use these in my grow light boxes when I used to use them. And you're basically looking for an LED bulb. This says 120 watts. This is not 120 watts. It's 120 watt equivalent. And what does that mean? Years ago when we only had the incandescent lights and they would heat up, you remember those old bulbs hopefully. <laughs> I'm not the only uh, old person here. Uh, older person I should say. So this is 120 watt equivalent but if you look on here it only uses 32 watts of power. Why is that important? When you buy this fixture this was nine dollars, find it at Home Depot. It's an 8.5 inch clamp light and if you look on here I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but it says a 120 watt rating. That means that this could handle a 120 watt incandescent bulb. You see it says 120 watts here. Don't go by this number. That's the equivalent. You have to look on here and you're going to see 32 watts. You just want to make sure the amount, the wattage, the wattage that your light is using is less than the rating on here. This is rated for like 120 or 150, so you're perfectly fine. Same thing when you look on the box, you want to be looking for, let's see if we can get that, the rating. So this is 1750 lumens. That's pretty high for a single bulb. It's a much harder to find the 2500, 3000, 4000, 5000 lumens in a single bulb versus buying something like that. And then the Kelvin rating is 5000, that's in the daylight range. And how you would sort of deal with the lower numbers here is this would be for a grow light box that you're setting up. Or if you're just, some people you know, you only want to seed start six tomatoes, a couple of, of peppers. You would just hold this, clamp it so that it's over your seed starts like that. And that's going to be plenty of light. Closer you put it down, the more intense the lumens are, the better the plants do. I'll talk about how close you put it to the plants or the seed starts and then when do you raise them in future videos. But that's the basic idea behind the grow lights is you're looking for your lumens. You want at least 2,000 lumens in the tubes. If you can get to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, great. You want to be at 5,000 to 6,500 Kelvin. That mimics daylight. And if your lumens are higher, your Kelvin can drop down a little bit. I've been doing this again for 15 years. I've used bulbs that were like 1800 lumens, 5000 Kelvin, the plants did fine. So don't overstress about the ratings. You just want to understand what they mean and you want to look for that. For instance, you could go in and you could buy something like this where it's 800 lumens and it's 3000 Kelvin. That's in the soft light, the yellow range, and that's no good. You just want to stick with those numbers. Here is another um, setup that I got. These are LED strip lights. I'll take these out and show you them in a second. And when you look down here, it'll tell you the same thing. It'll give you a nice Kelvin rating, a nice lumens rating. It's all the way down here. Let's take a look at that. Sometimes they come in colors and that helps too. So when you're over here, you're in a white and blue light, that's daylight. So this is 4,500, uh, Hold on, let me look. I should be wearing my glasses. So these are 4,500 lumens, which is really bright, and it's at the 4,000 Kelvin. So it's at the lower level, but again, the lumens is higher, the Kelvins is lower. We would just put this closer to the seed starts, and this would work nicely too. There's two bulbs in here. This is about $45, if I recall. So there's all kinds of systems, and the reason I like going over this is because you can buy these in parts and pieces um, right out of the big box stores and save yourself a lot of money. You might notice, uh, real quick, I'm not using LED lights that are red, blue, all those different colors. They might be effective, they might be needed, but we are just using these for starting seeds and growing transplants and then we're taking them outside. We're not growing indoors to get fruit, we're not growing indoors to get flowers. Maybe the LED lights that have different colors have greater value for fruiting, for flowering, um, they're just not needed. If you want to use them, I mean, go ahead. But these types of bulbs I've been using 15, 20 years, 
and they work really well. And now the LEDs have come down greatly in price. Stick to getting close to 6,500 Kelvin for daylight. Try and get well over 2,000 lumens. You'll be good to go. So here's a great lesson learned and perfect for the video. This fixture is uh, actually designed to be mounted into the ceiling and hardwired. There is no cord. So you want to make sure you read on the box that it has a, you know, at least a two foot cord. Um, some of them have four foot cords. And, you know, for instance, this LED system has a cord right there. You can see it. You can read it on the box. But you want to make sure that they are set up with cords so that they can go right into the outlets. You don't want them to be something that has to be hardwired into the ceiling unless you want to set up a more elaborate system. Anyway, these are going to go back to the store. Been doing this for 15 years. Never bought the fixture that doesn't have a cord. Um, but there's so many to choose from now. Just really take, you know, the lesson learned from this video with the lumens, the Kelvin. Take your time, find something that works in your price point, um, and just make sure it has a cord. Because if it doesn't, you're going to have to take it back like me. The other thing you're going to want with your uh, lighting system is a timer. A timer will be your best friend so that you don't just have to remember to plug and unplug um, your light fixtures. You're going to turn these on for 12, 14, 16 hours of daylight. You always want to make sure you have at least eight hours of darkness for the plants. And that's going to vary based on where the plants are in their uh, stage of growth. And we'll talk about that in future videos. And you'll probably need an extension cord. All right, let me set these up and turn them on just so you can see what they look like. Take a look at my grow light station. And that will be the introduction into buying the lights, understanding lumens, Kelvin, and making sure you know what you're purchasing. So this is my grow light station. I, you know, probably grow, I don't know, three, 400 transplants. You don't need something this big. So just, you know, create the design that works for you. Let's start at the bottom. This is the clamp light. If you're just starting a couple seeds, you know, indoors, you want maybe six, 12 uh, tomatoes or a combination of peppers. This will work perfectly fine. You can see the intensity from this bulb. It's LED, it's not going to get hot, and it's a 32 watt bulb in this 150 watt fixture. That's what you want. Lower wattage than what the fixture is. And you would just put your plants right under here. When your seed's starting and they haven't broken the surface yet, you want your plants to have the light like two inches from the soil surface. And then once they break the surface, you keep them there for about a week and then you can adjust the lights. We'll talk about that in future videos. Down here I have a single light. I like to use two systems for a seed flat so that I can put one over here, one over here, or I can turn them this way. When I'm using a single one, that's usually for uh, plants that have been growing maybe three, four, five weeks. They don't need to have the light right on top of them. You can, you know, space them uh, below the lights four, five, six inches. So you have more leeway with where these lights sit above your plants as the plants get bigger. These are the T8 bulbs, nice and bright. This is the LEDs. They all come with chains and you can adjust the height. If you don't want to keep moving the fixtures up and down, you can just put something underneath the tray and raise it where you want. So you might put the tray up a little bit higher like this. And when your seed's starting, you move it closer to the light. And as they start to grow, you bring it back down here. And that's the basic setup. I'll talk more about this in future videos. Also cover the heat mat. But I think this video will just stick with lumens, kelvins, and what you need for lighting. And the next video I'm going to do is going to cover all these starting materials here on the left. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I also have an Amazon shop where I put some of these different items, not the exact ones because they're really hard to find, but I have an Amazon affiliate shop now and you can go to that. The link is in the description and it will take you to a couple ideas of different lights and different things you can use, uh, timers too, that you can use for a price basis and maybe look around and you know, order from Amazon. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.